there we land 8.1 we are looking for f prime of x from first principles if f of x is equals to minus 2x squared plus 3x if we would use the power rule to find f prime of x so we are finding f prime of x using the power rule we would get minus 4x plus 3 that should be easy to see why that is the case this is if we use the power rule so when we use the power rule when we use first principles f prime of x should be the same thing so essentially by doing this by finding f prime of x using the power rule we have our final answer and then in using the first principles if we don't get the same answer then we would have no we would know that there's a mistake that we've committed uh, somewhere along our steps so let's go ahead and do it using first principles so using first principles we know fully well that f prime of x is equal to the limit as h tends to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h that is the limit using or f prime of x using uh, first principles so we have this part here f of x plus h and we have f of x and then we are dividing by h right so it will get you messy if we all do it in the same step so let's find f of x plus h separately and see what this is equal to so what we do in place of x in f of x we substitute x plus h so we're gonna have minus 2 in place of x x plus h we square that plus 3 in place of x x plus h so we're gonna have minus 2 and then x plus h squared that is x squared plus 2 x h plus h squared plus 3 x plus 3 h so this is going to be equals to minus 2 x squared minus 4 x h minus 2 h squared plus 3 x plus 3 h that is f of x plus h now we can sub we can subtract uh, the f of x right and we will essentially have our numerator because our numerator says f of x plus h minus f of x so let's go ahead and say f of x plus h minus f of x this will be equals to f of x plus h we know fully well now that it is minus 2x squared minus 4xh minus 2h squared plus 3x plus 3h and then we are subtracting f of x f of x is just minus 2x squared plus 3x so let's go ahead and do that uh, we have minus 2x squared let me use a different color we have minus 2x squared minus minus 2x squared so that will be minus 2x squared plus 2x squared so that will give us zero right and then we have minus 4x h does not have a like term so we have minus 4x h and then minus 2h squared it also doesn't have a like term so minus 2h squared and then plus 3x minus 3x that will give us a zero those are two like terms right and then plus 3h that does not have a like term so there we go that is f of x plus h minus f of x now we can substitute it back into f prime of x so we're gonna have f prime of x being equals to the limit as h tends to zero and then on the numerator we have f of x plus h minus f of x of which at this point we know fully well that it is equals to minus 4x h minus 2 h squared plus 3 h and then on the denominator we have h so f prime of x will be equals to the limit as h tends to zero and then on the numerator uh, at this point here we have 3 h and not plus 3 but plus 3 h we can see it uh, right here so in the numerator at this step we must take h as a common factor so that the h on the numerator and the h on the denominator cancels out right if you get to this step and uh, that is not the case some way somehow it does not cancel out 
there's something wrong we're doing so on the numerator when we take h as a common factor we get minus 4x minus 2h plus 3 and we are dividing everything by h but already we are saying that h and h will cancel out right so f prime of x let's now let h tend to zero so we're gonna have minus 4x minus 2 h tends to zero right plus 3 so this is equals to minus 4x plus 3 which is the same thing we get when we use the power rule so we are a bit confident that we have done uh, the correct thing that is 8.1 let's take a look at 8.2 so 8.2 we are given f of x which is equals to 3x squared over 2 minus 24 multiplied by square root of x and we're supposed to find f prime of 9. so what do we do let's find f prime of x let's derivate the function let's derivate f of x and after we do that let's substitute 9 and find the value seems pretty much straightforward so f prime of x well before we even get to f prime of x let's just write f of x in a way that will allow us to use the power rule 3 over 2x squared has no issue right uh, no issue there whatsoever so we can leave that as it is but minus 24 square root of x we can write it as minus 24 x to the power half because square root same thing as taking to the power half so now we're good to go we can actually use the power rule now at this point so f prime of x will be so we have 2 multiplied by 3 over 2 x to the power 2 minus 1 minus a half multiplied by 24 x to the power a half minus 1 so 2 and 2 cancels out in this case we get 3 x right because 2 minus 1 is just 1 and then 24 multiplied by a half we get minus 12 x to the power minus a half right uh, obviously we can rewrite these x to the power a uh, minus a half in a more you know yeah in an acceptable manner but who decides which manner is acceptable we can write it without an exponent uh, which is negative we can write it in the following way we can say that this is 3x minus 12 divided by x to the power half uh, of which further we can see 3x minus 12 divided by square root of x there we go we can write it in that way uh, but anyway stories let's go ahead and find f prime of 9 so this is f prime of x we want to find f prime of 9 so we substitute 9 there so 3 multiplied by 9 minus 12 divided by square root of 9 3 multiplied by 9, 18, 27, right? And then minus 12 over square root of 9. Square root of 9, that will give us 3. So is 12 divided by 3, which is 4. So 24 minus, oh, 27 minus 4, which is uh, 23. So there we go. That is f prime of 9. We're really sticking to the basics. Nothing complicated here. Eight point three. Let's take a look. A function g of x is equals to a x squared plus b over x. It has a minimum value at x is equals to four. Minimum, the gradient is zero at x is equals to four. So we know that the function value at x is equals to four is ninety six. Okay. So calculate the values of a and b. We have two pieces of information minimum value at x equals to 4 and when x equals to 4 uh, g of x is 96 those are the two pieces of information so two pieces of information two variables we can see where this is going we can see where this is going so let's use the first piece of information so the first piece of information says that um the minimum value at is at x equals to uh, 4 right so the minimum is the gradient so we then need g <laughs> uh, g prime of x 
right we need the derivative there so let's go ahead and uh, write it in the manner that allows us to derivate so g of x is equals to no issue here e x squared but here it's better if we write it as b x to the minus one because we know that there is one there so when you take it from the denominator to the numerator the exponent must become negative so now we can derivate g prime of x will be equals to 2ax minus bx minus 2 right but we know that g of x has a minimum at 4 the gradient is 0 when x is 4 so we have 0 2a x is 4 minus b x is 4 to the minus 2 right so we get 0 being equal to so just 2 multiplied by 4 uh, which will give us 8a which will give us 8a so we have 0 being equal to 8a and then minus b multiplied by 4 to the minus 2 right so that will give us minus b over 16 right 4 to the minus 2 will give us 1 over 16 so that will be minus b over 16 and that is equals to 0 uh, so we can decide which to make our subject of the formula here uh, really uh, we can decide um, if we make b the subject of the formula we get b over 16 being equals to 8a uh, so b is equals to 16 multiplied by 8a right i don't have a calculator but uh, that will give us um let's see b will be close to 128a so that is b in terms of a so we can let that be our equation one and the second piece of uh, the second piece of information we'll use it to find an equation two and solve simultaneously so g of x is still equals to ax squared plus b over x but when x is equals to 4 g of x is 96 so when x is equals to 4 g of x is 96 so b over 4 so 96 is equals to 16a plus b over 4 okay uh b is 128a so 96 is equal to 16a plus 128a over 4 right and then 96 will be equal to 16a plus 128 over 4 uh, I think that she'll give us uh, 3264. Uh, let me see, 128 divided by 4, 32, right? Okay, so we have 32a. So 96 is equal to 3216, uh, 48a. She'll be easy to see that a is equal to 2. So that is the value of a. Now we can find the value of b because we know that b is 128a. So this is 128a is 2. So b is equal to 256. There we go. That is question 8.